Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at parallax. So you can see right here, if you look at the star fields in the background, there are actually multiple layers of stars. Some aren't moving at all and some are moving a little bit. And they're all at slightly different speeds. And this is causing a kind of parallax effect. So basically it's creating an illusion of 3D depth. You can kind of judge where the stars are by how fast they're moving. So because they're moving quite slowly, we get the effect that they're very far away from us. And the furthest stars, the ones that aren't really moving at all, those must be very far away. And this is a really cool effect for a lot of 2D games when you want to give, like I said, the illusion of depth. So first off, what we're going to do is just get the effect working on the stars that we already have from the camera video. And right now, when we move the player, the star field, of course, isn't moving at all. The background just stays where it is. But if we move the background a little bit in the same direction as the camera, it's going to basically look like our movements have less of an effect on the background. And that will give us the illusion that we're actually very far away from it. The stars are very far in the distance, depending on how much the star field moves relative to the camera. But we'll get a better idea of this when we can actually see it happening. So we're going to do this from within the camera object itself. And if we come into the step event right here, what we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to move the position of the background. So we already know where the camera is, given that we just moved it. And what I'm going to do now is use layer X. And we can see that it's looking for a layer ID and then a position to move that to. So I'm going to middle click this and open up the documentation page on this. Because there is one thing that we should note. We can supply either the layer name as a string, but it does note that this will have a performance impact. So what this means is we can put the actual name of the layer. So if we come back to our game room, we can see that it's just called background. So let's just put that in. So background. But the documentation says that this isn't the most performant way to do it. And we could instead be supplying the layer ID. For our purposes, it doesn't really matter though. We're not really making a really intense performance game, but we could, for example, just get the layer ID once in the create event and then use that here instead. Anyway, what we might just do first off is move the layer to where the camera is. So now it should be moving at the same time the camera is moving and it'll, it should just look like it's static. Let's see what effect that has on the game. So we've moved its X and Y. And if I move the ship, you can see it looks like the stars aren't moving at all. So this does look pretty strange because, especially when there aren't any asteroids present, we don't really have a point of reference for the ship. But how about we try and multiply this by something like 0.9. There we go. So we can start to see the effect happening. And it looks a little bit more normal now. So now what we're going to do is just introduce some more layers to kind of uh, heighten the effect. So I actually have some sprites that we can import. And I'm just going to drag these in to the sprites. So that contained four different backgrounds. So a couple different star field backgrounds that kind of just look like white or gray pixels and you can make that yourself or you can use the ones that I've made. So in addition to a few of these, there's also just a gradient effect and I'm going to overlay that over all of the images just to give the background a little bit of variance because at the moment it's just kind of a black background. So let's set these up in the room first. And I'm actually going to get rid of this background layer or I'm going to get rid of the sprite anyway just to return it to black so that we have something in the complete background. And so like I said, we're going to have four layers. So I'm going to call this one parallax zero. And I'm going to assign that to star field zero. So this one I want actually to be the one that 
appears furthest in the background. So if we zoom in, it should actually just be in the top left hand corner. And what I'm going to do is tile it horizontally and vertically. So there it is. So that one is the kind of blurriest one for me, which would make sense because it's the objects that are furthest in the distance. Perhaps it's other galaxies or stars, doesn't really matter. And let's make the rest of them. Parallax 1, it doesn't actually matter what you call it, but this is just so that we know what it is doing. And I'll assign that to star field 1. And I'll tile that one as well. Star field 2. Call that parallax 2, and we'll tile that one as well. So you can see it's starting to fill up nicely now. And lastly is that gradient effect. And I'll tile that as well. Now, at the moment, that gradient is probably a little bit too strong. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit by changing this color. So this is the color that the background is kind of blending with. And since it's just completely white at the moment, it just appears as normal. But we can change these. You can actually tint it if you want. I'm not going to tint it a color, but what I'm going to do is turn down its alpha. And that's going to make the effect a little bit more subtle. There we go. So now it's just a kind of slight hue shift. And I forgot to rename this one. All right, so that's all of the layers set up. Let's head back to the camera object to move these around. What we're going to do is move four of those layers just at different amounts. So remember, if it's just at one, that means it's going to move exactly with the camera and it's going to appear as if it's not moving at all. So the lower this number is, the closer it's going to look to the player because it's going to actually be more static. If things are moving with the camera, then they're going to look further away. So for layer zero, we want a really slight effect. So I might keep that quite high. So remember that one is the one that I wanted furthest in the distance. And I'm just going to copy paste this and we'll just parallax layer one, two, and three. And now we just have to decrease these numbers a bit. So feel free to have a play with these. These are numbers that I have just kind of picked out arbitrarily. It doesn't really matter. But this is going to give us a nice kind of subtle effect. So if we run that now, we should be getting a kind of layered effect of different layers moving at different speeds and appearing at different depths. There we go. So I think that looks quite nice. Like I said, Feel free to have a play around with all of the values. You can get lots of different effects. You might want to have some random objects just moving through space, but that is a really quick way to do parallax. In the next video, we're going to be looking at creating some enemy ships. So I will see you in the next video.